Hello everybody, this is me, it's Bud. Uh, so first off, I, ha I have an issue here. Maybe someone knows uh, how to fix this easily. I, I, let me show you. This is something I do quite often, both in the browser and the text editor. I just maybe want to select here. Okay, this is interesting. I want to say, and then I want to select the, uh, some text, but it scrolls so damn fast. <laughs> so, so you end up with be, well, well, I don't even know where I started on the, the selection. It's like maybe a bit better here because I can almost adjust it, but it's extremely sensitive. Is it here? Slow. Here, extremely, or maybe maybe not. Maybe it's not that, but it's too fast for me. I, I, I'm getting old, you know, uh, here in Qt browser. Sublime, there there is no uh, limit. It's just like, bleh. well, yeah, scrolling down, not as fast. I guess it maybe it is just because, well, you saw there. And this is not that high above, you know. Maybe I want to select here something and then... This just doesn't work, and this, the text editor, maybe it's a sublime setting. Maybe we should look at that first here. Uh, God damn it. Give me the settings. Ah. Settings, preferences, default, scroll, find. Scroll past and true. Here we have something. Scroll speed. Set zero to disable smooth scrolling. Okay, let's try that first. Oh, no. Um, set the value between zero and one. Scroll slower. Or set to larger than one to scroll faster. Okay. Between zero and one to scroll slower. Okay. Set it to zero point one. I don't know. Well, this is super slow, but up. Okay, and this is that. And there it was slow to automatically. Okay, set it to zero. Use the mouse. I just want to see. Yeah, then it disables. No smooth. I don't know if I like this better actually. Whatever. It's not this. No, it's something else. It's this drag scroll thing here. Uh, maybe it's just good. Uh, I can can say that to myself that it's uh, this is probably good for me. I have to uh, figure out a better way to scroll things than dragging because that's a in a way a bad habit. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be anything here either. Uh, and I can't find anything when I Google for it if, or DuckDuckGo for it, of course. Uh, I made a quick shout out in the uh, Arch Linux IRC uh, and they pointed me to this page here. Uh, I guess I should try out some things here, maybe, but maybe someone knows exactly what this is. It feels like it's something, it doesn't everyone select text and, and scroll like this. Uh, it just doesn't work here for me. It's very annoying actually. Whatever. This Now we have talked about that. If someone knows how to help me with this, please let me know. If it, one, one way you could help, uh, tell me. Go to BudLab site we ask, go to discussions, make a thread about it here. Um, because that's what I want to talk about. That's what this video is about, this uh, thread I opened here. Because, uh, so, uh, by the way, I have made two updates to i 3 s since the last video. So two updates in, in or three updates in, in three days, basically. Um, so let's recap those really quickly because uh, they are quite cool. First, we have this one, you know, rules real. That was what I showed you in the last video two days ago. Then in that video, when I made that video, I, I also noticed there is a bug in this. So I actually, I fixed that. And that is basically this release. I just fixed that issue. Uh, but while doing that, I got an issue here on GitHub. Um, someone who tested i3king that also had a request here for an apply option uh, that would loop through all windows and apply 
uh, rules to each window. So applying rules to every currently open window. This can be useful, uh, actually. Uh, the user here wanted it because they, um, when, when they restarted i3, uh, it lost all, all the, yeah, that's what's happened when you restart i3. It, 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 re restarting, don't do that. Please don't use restart. It, it's such a weird uh, thing in i3. And it does just as it, what, what it say here, it restarts i3. So it, it it's, it really does. Uh, it's like closing i3 and starting it again. So it loses all information it had. It loses all uh, marks. It closes all IPC uh, sockets and a lot of weird things usually happens when you uh, execute i3 restart. Uh, there is also the reload uh, command. So you can do i3 message reload instead of restart. That is much more gentle it actually doesn't restart the process it just reads the conf config again and yeah applies that but weird things usually happens with that as well especially if you are using four window rules but it's much more gentle to use the reload function but sometimes you have to restart and sometimes i3 actually forces you to restart if you are doing something really stupid um Nonetheless, uh, this apply option was uh, interesting to me. I, I thought, yeah, that is something I should investigate how to, how to do that because that that can be useful for for in other uh, cases. Maybe you want to uh, do this when you start uh, uh, the session, you know, because you might have a lot of windows already existing when you start because you might might start application in Xorg or whatever, and then you could just fire up apply and it would apply rules to those already existing windows and other other things. I, I, I really wanted to, to investigate this. So I did. I also ma made an answer here, but yeah, don't use restart. It's awkward. Um, but when I was uh, actually writing this, I also realized, hey, isn't there a way to subscribe for the restart uh, signal from uh, um, the i3 IPC? Because that's how i3 King works, you know. Um, I, I subscribe to the IPC to see when a new window is created and then apply rules, you know. Uh, and it is possible to, uh, and that means I, I am subscribing to window events. But then I realize I, I, I can probably subscribe for this restart signal, signal as well, and it, it will not affect performance or anything because, yeah, that only happens like <laughs> never. Uh, so I tried that and I could uh, subscribe to it and I got the signal and then I also noticed that yeah the, uh, That's when I noticed that it actually closes all the IPC sockets. So that meant that um, i3 King stopped working as soon as you restarted it It kind of broke the loop uh, that was reading the, the IPC, you know But I still got the signal and I could react on it and that meant that I could react on it and restart just restart i3 King So that fixed that issue that I didn't even know I had. Uh, so that was cool. Uh, then I also started to, to do this apply option. And it was quite easy. I just uh, made a little s uh, script thing that um, yeah, we can bring it up. i3 king. I've reorganized uh, the script a bit here now. It's a little bit cleaner now. Um, apply rules. I, I, I just do a stupid thing like this. Uh, parse i3 message get tree. So, so this will get the whole session, you know, every single window, every workspace, everything, the scratch pad, the docs, every, everything. You get everything with this i3 get tree in one uh, line of JSON. Uh, and then I just look for uh, keys that is uh, named the window because that have the window ID. And only uh, actual windows have a window ID, so not uh, containers. Like this monitor container here, for example, that's an i3 container. That doesn't have a window ID. It's not really a window. Um, uh, and if that is the case, then uh, the value of window is null. So for each key that is window where the value is not null, print that uh, uh, value. That means you will get a list of all of all uh, existing windows, as we can do this here. You see, here we have a bunch of 
window IDs. These are all existing windows in this uh, current session I have. So that's quite easy, also quite fast, 11 milliseconds here. Mm. And this is the apply rule function. I execute this function here that just prints this list. I guess I could just put this stuff in here, but whatever. Um, and put them in an array called IDs, IDS here, whatever. Then I loop that array, so for each ID. Uh, then I use i3get, just take one of these IDs, and take this guy, and then try that command there, i3get d id return ncityd, and there it prints. Uh, Container ID and container ID is the, the internal uh, uh, i3 ID. So it, uh, yeah, whatever. This is the class C instance name i t panel. So this is probably this guy here. Uh, y unknown and Y here, that's a new uh, character you can use here to get the window type. Um, and here the window ID again. I just print it here for convenience. It's not. It doesn't matter. It doesn't affect the speed of this i3 get at all. As you can see, i3 get is not the fastest program in the world, but it's very convenient to just get everything you need without any hassle here. Uh, I could make this more efficient, but it, it really doesn't matter. As you can see, I, I still use a sleep here anyways. Uh, sleep for 100 milliseconds because otherwise executing the commands here was too fast or applying the rules. Uh, and I put put these values now in an array called win info. And then I execute match window uh, and pass uh, each key here uh, or each value in that array as an argument to match window. And that's uh, this match window is what I uh, use here when I uh, match the rules also. So if, if we look in the main file, it now looks like this. It's much cleaner here now. Parse the rules, blah, blah, blah. Here is if you have used the apply option, then it will just apply and then exit. Just do that function. But uh, in, in uh, normal circumstances, it goes into this loop, you know, here reading the JSON, uh, waiting for a new window. And when we find a new window, it will get the information it needs. And then it also executes match window, passing it the same uh, uh, arguments here as I used the uh, i3get to, to get here. Uh, whatever. Um, that means with apply there, I can uh, um, can do the same thing. I match the windows against the rules, um, and that just worked. It worked. Uh, it, it works really well, um, and it even works um, with this um, restart. I, I actually my, my my thought was that th this is I shouldn't bother with this restart uh, thing here. Because restart is so weird, it always just breaks something whenever you restart. But this time it actually, oh, exclamation mark. Someone has probably mentioned me in, in XChat. Maybe the solution is solved, whatever. I don't want to open, open it for to, and uh, ruin, ruin the privacy. Or maybe someone has written something embarrassing and don't want it on YouTube, you know, whatever. Um, Yeah, here, down here, that is a loop, the end of the loop uh, that uh, waits for a new uh, window to get created, because that's the only thing I'm listening for. And I do it here with item message dash MT subscribe and I listen for, for window events. Then I looked up the documentation that you can also listen for shut down uh, events, which in turn can have this change uh, restart. And this is sent when, when you restart. And I guess you could also, in theory here, with uh, IPC, listen for when you shut down i3, for example, and then you could react on that and do things there uh, if you wanted to, uh, or whatever. And probably reload as well uh, will also get sent. Uh, so if I get this, I say restart equals 1. And when it restarts, as I mentioned, it breaks the IPC, meaning that will break the loop. Uh, it will not read anything else here, and then it will end up here. Uh, this would also happen if you exit the, the script or, 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 
or what well, it could happen for other reason than just a restart. Uh, so that's why I test here. Did it actually restart? And was the option uh, no restart not set? Because you can use the command line option dash dash no restart, and then this will not happen anyways. Um, but if it uh, if it restarted, uh, then we say here we got the restart event. It prints that here in the terminal, and then um, it goes into a infinite loop here sleeping 100 milliseconds and then it test here capital s uh, test that then a socket exists because we, you need to do something like this this command here i3 dash dash get socket path uh, prints the ipc socket path uh, and this uh, yeah this is what gets uh, destroyed when you restart uh, and then it automatically also creates a new one when it restarts there so so you can if you just wait here till that exists, and that usually just takes 100 milliseconds, uh, if even that. But you cannot go on here immediately. Then it will you will get an error saying that this doesn't exist. So as soon as it finds this socket, it breaks this uh, infinite loop, and then it goes into apply rules uh, and apply the rules uh, uh, as I showed you there, there to all windows. Then it say I will restart i3 king and then uh, an exec here, meaning it will replace the cur this process, this, the running script here. It will re replace the process with this command. And this command bash source zero is uh, like the path to the script that is running. Uh, and it passes the arguments that was passed to that script. So it, it will just restart the whole script. This is in in a way this could also be done better or more efficient, but then it just gets more convoluted because what this means is that it will it will also reread all the rules again. Uh, I could avoid that. Uh, could could restart this loop uh, without rereading the rules if I wanted to, do. but I think I want to do it like this. It, it just makes it cleaner and easier to do this. And it doesn't matter. It have just applied all the rules. It doesn't matter if, if it takes like 100 milliseconds extra here or it doesn't even take that. It takes like 50 milliseconds to parse the rules. So, so whatever. Um, and it, it works fine. I have i3king running here. Check this out. We start. You see? Yeah, no, it didn't work fine. Now it worked like ass, actually. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, the reason being, of course, I don't have a window rule here. Yeah, this is floating now. It's almost working. Which terminal is this? It's almost okay. Whatever it. But the thing is, this is actually. Fine. Might sound weird to say so. Yeah, this is good. Ah, and this also. Yes, yes. No, it was working. It, it is because for this to work uh, well here, you have to make... I know exactly. You see, I, I now I just uh, popped out these two windows and now, you see, it is working. It is fine. I'm back, and sure, now I am showing the uh, X chat here. Let, let's just see if someone answered me anything there. But you should not use X chat. It's dead and have severe se security issues. Use hex chat for a somewhat maintained replacement. Whatever, <laughs> whatever. I use whatever I want. <laughs> I want to use X chat. I use X chat. X chat is GTK2. And it's cool. It's great. It is a bit weird. Sometimes you see the text gets like here. You have I have like three shades of red in in the E there, and here C down there looks super weird. <laughs> uh, it's not a perfect perfect program, but I I I I'm using that. Don't don't uh, ask me that. Okay. The reason here why it didn't work uh, exactly as I wanted to is uh, that this terminal here that I'm running i3king in, uh, um, yeah, I guess we can execute this guy, i3info, I'll select this, we can see that that have the instance name auto, because it's one of the terminals, sometimes I just 
create a terminal like this super control enter uh, and that creates a terminal uh, with the instance name auto and you can also see here in i3 king that we did nothing happened here because those uh, uh, um, terminals are uh, one uh, one of the few applications that are ign that ignores the default uh, uh, rule um, it feels like this video is getting really weird here but whatever here i have uh, the default rule applies to everything if no other criteria matches but if the class name is your xvt and the instance name is auto then don't trigger the default rule so terminals with the instance name uh, uh, auto they don't trigger any rule at all and that means when um, I restarted i3 there, uh, we could see that this one was kind of, as soon as I pop this window out of, of um, if we do this and place it there again. No, no, it didn't place it there. Kind of. Or if we leave it here, that will also get weird, I think. It, because what i3 king will do there when it restarts and apply the rules to all windows. It will just look at all windows and see if any rules matches and then apply them. And when it see this window, it will say, oh, this doesn't match anything. Not even the default rule. Just leave it there. So that will just get left there as a, a tiled window. Um, and that that is actually expected uh, uh, behavior, you know. So it isn't broken. We could, yeah, let's do it again. Let's uh, restart i3 again. And then I can show you if we don't have uh, i3 king uh, um, enabled, how, how that works. There. And this is also a floating window, I would guess. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, this is probably that i3 info because i3 info also subscribes to the IPC. Yeah, that also have uh, auto and this have auto. So both of these are ignored there. And those are the ones that, as you can see, these four seems to be in correct containers. Uh, Mm. Yeah, let's just close these guys. And this one should actually be floating. And this is the, yeah, this is this guy. Okay, if we make them floating now and do item message restart now we should see and we can also restore the layout this it doesn't do this automatically because that's uh, done in yeah whatever uh, restart now you see everything works because now there are no tiled windows that that uh, gets ignored by i3 king and everything works let's close i3 king here and also the important thing here is that it since it applies the rules and my rules move the windows to uh, i3 with i3 FIDA and stuff, that means that it will have all the needed i3 FIDA marks and stuff so you can do things like this. Uh, when you restart, all marks are removed and that means that i3 FIDA have no idea about the layout. It doesn't, it, it thinks that it doesn't have a layout even if it m might seem like it does. So there, no i3 king is running this might sometimes it crashes when you do this so that might happen now but we will see should also just close calibre because i don't want to show my book collection there it restarted and now th this is one of the one of the best restarts ever because nothing seems to have broken and it was extremely faster uh, because this, I think they have reworked the restart uh, quite a bit here in the last uh, versions of i3. Because usually it, it lost like this as well, you know. And, and when you restart, it, it basically means here is the output of i3, by the way. You see, you get lots of weird stuff here when you restart. Um, because when you restart, it is basically, basically killing the i3 uh, uh, process for, for 
very short time and then it immediately starts it again but when you kill it then there is no concept of tiled windows or anything or and tabbed windows and stuff like that and what usually happens is, is that you get all existing windows uh, like uh, tiled in in one container or something like that uh, so now everything looks normal but it isn't if i would now try to uh, toggle this guy here for example move this down then I get stuff like this, and now we are here. It's it gets super awkward. Um, it, it loses the i three four four stuff completely. And the, the, when this happens, it, it it to me because this sometimes sometimes i three gets restarted. It's it's almost like a crash. Uh, it, it tells you, do you want me to restart everything? And then you say yes, and you can of course use the computer here but uh, it is broken the i3 fira stuff is broken and the only way to get it back is like to either just make everything floating again to force the rules when it uh, tile windows and stuff like that which sometimes doesn't work either uh, so so this is really really nice that now it will just automatically fix everything and now, even now, when we, you know, now we don't have any marks at all here. Nothing. But if I restart i3, so now i uh, restart has actually become useful here. If you, for some reason, mess up the session, you can just restart while you have i3 king uh, running, and then it will apply all the rules, and now we can do all the i3 feed are good stuff so that's really really cool i i had never thought about this i would never have done any of this if i hadn't gotten that issue so i'm really happy that i did um, and it was not difficult at all to to implement any of this it was smooth uh, sailing all the way and as you could see there in the code i used the, I'm, I'm really happy that i finally did something like this feels good uh, that I'm using i3 get here instead of creating like a big awk script to gather all the script because that's how you could do this you could do everything here inside this command basically you could save quite a lot of time because I I, I timed this it takes about 300 milliseconds to do this and this on say 10 10 windows but it doesn't matter as I mentioned it doesn't it's still you still need to add uh, uh, lag here basically because if you apply the rules immediately or on top of each other it, it will be too fast then you get always some weird uh, uh, lingering thing there and this is <laughs> as you could see it, it is not that that slow another thing by the way is also uh, it will take all windows um, um, so now we have a window on the scratch pad. That terminal window is on the scratch pad. And that will be uh, taken into account here by with all window IDs. And that could, yeah, now we got this. Yeah, let's see what happens now. I managed to crash i3 here now. Uh, and I usually take F here. I, I'm not sure now if we should take R, F to forget the previous layout. It, it shouldn't really matter here which one we takes. I always take F because that seems to work better, but I wonder if not R works like. We got the red box of death on tape. Okay, I'm pressing F. That that forgets the layout. This should place everything in the same container, just make it tile. It doesn't know anything about the windows. No, I take R. Okay, R. Go. No, didn't work. We... Yeah, this is really here. Here you can see that that error. It didn't have the the IPC socket. Um. Yeah, it probably sent a different uh, different signal there. But what we could do now is probably just try the end. I three king verbose. Restart and then it should apply all the rules. Maybe it got borked out there now. It, it this didn't work out yesterday. I tried it with, with Windows on the scratch pad like this. Try it again. Nice, nice. I, I am actually happy here that I am able to trigger a, a, 
to trigger this red box of death. What, what I want to do now, when I got this, uh, I, I really want to see what kind of... Uh, if I can fetch this IPC signal, because it probably sends some kind of uh, message here now to the IPC. Maybe, maybe not. Restart in place, doesn't work, this breaks, okay. I wouldn't be surprised if it is the same. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I was also thinking I should do this anyway, so. Change this to an if. Then uh, and if move this then then we could do this else. Um, yeah, let's just echo it out here, whatever. Echo unknown un unknown event colon JSON. There. Hopefully now we can see what that is called. R3 King verbose. Uh, restart. Oh, yeah, now this is the unknown event here. Whatever. Yeah, because it also gets focus events and stuff like that. Whatever. Restart, blah, blah, blah. Nice. Put this window on the scratch pad. Um, restart, get the crash. Uh, restart in place, R. Damn it. Didn't get any event there, okay. It gets this. This is printed from. That window is not a valid container ID. This must be here. Wonder if we can do this. If restart is equal to zero, and oh, let's just do that. If restart is, we don't have restart. Then it have broken for some other reason here. We could, we could do this whole thing here. Maybe. A 
Testing R. There. <laughs> Recovered from a crash. Recovered from the red box of death. Okay. I recovered from the red box of death. Mm, this, on the other hand, it means that it will always just loop here. Uh, it will never break this. But maybe that doesn't matter. Maybe that is fine. The, I, I like this. You know, this, may, this means that we now recover from a crash. Let's test it with the F also. Red box of death. I press F. Almost, almost worked, right? Put this as a tile window here, otherwise it's fine. You know, when this happened in the past, like yesterday, or then I needed to restart i3 when that happened. And you might now say that, yeah, but red box of death, that's no one wants that, you know, no, yeah, but that kind of happens. That is the stuff that happens when you do i3 message restart. Uh, now it got like uh, messed up here because uh, there was a window on the scratch pad and you wanted to restart i3. That is how sensitive the restart is, you know, and having a window on the scratch pad, yeah, maybe it was also not just a window, it is actually a tabbed container <laughs> with this terminal inside of it on the scratch pad. Uh, but anyways, you know, it's... Um, could actually try with this window on the scratch pad because that is not anything weird with that if we put this on the scratch pad and do i3 message restart now it will maybe not break no and now, now it just brought it back here but if you have a weird container like an i3 theta container because this this is actually a tabbed container, it puts this tabbed container here. Even if it's just one window, it is a tabbed container on the scratch pad. Uh, that is probably why it gets uh, messed up there. Well, now it uh, worked. Now we didn't get red box of death. But we do that if we have a single window in this tabbed container. No, no red box of death. Okay, I, I don't know. You see, you see, it's it's quite um, unreliable. The I2 message restart. Whoops, not that guy. <laughs> but now when I added this here, uh, this doesn't matter either. And now this is what I was talking about there. That uh, if I did, <laughs> if I if I do it like this. If I do it like this, then I don't need uh, to restart uh, because now it already have the rules in memory. It applies the rules. Maybe we should just leave it like this and not even have this guy here. And we don't need this crap here. We actually don't need to listen now for the shutdown event. We don't need to do this. Okay, this video took a weird turn here, but whatever. Now it just restarts in place, it just... no, it didn't. Hmm, hmm, yeah, 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 yeah. Now we should also add the restart the process here, because it still breaks the loop there, it gets weird. I guess we could just put this loop inside of a forever loop then. Yeah. While true do. I don't even want to indent this stuff, but why not? 
Um, Yeah, and it just keeps on running. Beautiful. Now it will probably break there. Restart. We get the red box. No, now it works. Everything works fine. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, and I actually think we made less lines here. Yeah. Well, whatever. This is fine. So if you want, yeah, why, why would you have no restart and stuff? This is what you want to have happen, I guess. Might feel a bit weird to always apply the rules if this gets broken, but that is probably what you want to do. Yeah, let's do it like this, because then it just automatically fixes itself. Most of the time it will be an error and you would like to apply the rules there. Um, and it doesn't seem to... Applying the rules is not the problem, you know. It's the restart itself that might cause problems. Um, and this should only break if the IPC is broken, which should only happen on, on like weird weird events like restart so and if you just want to kill it king then you could just kill it king like this and that shouldn't yeah that is interesting now does this trigger no that didn't trigger the apply rules and stuff so nice 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 okay uh, i guess i made a new update here then uh, also Um, another thing that I um, realized when I was uh, testing this out uh, is if we look in my rules file, we can see I, I'm using a new, I added two, two new uh, magic variables, con ID and win ID, which will have the uh, current container ID or the current window ID of the window that triggered uh, um, that triggered the event and I had ac actually forgot that this is something I have really wanted in i3 with the four window rules um, yeah let's let's uh, emulate that yeah it's probably enough if we do this we will see some weir weird stuff if we do this because this is how I used to have it like I, I have this uh, double uh, dollar TC two container that expands to exec no startup id i3 feed up move and then i have here tca and that will move it to the a container this will move this window to the blah 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 you get it you get it and this is what i had here in i3 king um, we do that and then restart uh, to trigger all, all the all the rules here Yeah, now you can see a uh, cute browser is in the wrong container. It moved that out of the, out of the way. It's, it's, something is something is not right. Um, yeah, there we got that guy. Pressed F. Now this guy is yeah. Now you see things is already getting weird just because I changed that thing there. Um, what is happening here, uh, why it isn't working properly now, where is the LXDE terminal now? <laughs> God damn it. Uh, what happened now is um, that uh, <clears throat> i3 feed uh, move, what, how that works is that it, uh, it operates on the active window. And usually you don't fire up like uh, 
a lot of white with Fida uh, commands at the same time, which, which we almost do now. It isn't at the same time, but it's so close together. So sometimes a different window might have focus than the one that had when you started the ITP Fira command. And sometimes also, because I had forgot to add this, uh, this is what I used to do in my i3 config. I added focus here, uh, and then a semicolon. And that will make sure that it first focuses the, the window triggering the rule and then execute this. And I, I remember this, this actually makes this a little bit safer, so to speak. If we save this, uh, pop this out. Uh, yeah, we need to close this guy. We could also try it now with the ice picking apply and that will not start. That should just apply the rule, the rules. And now it might uh, fix everything, but it might also not do that. No, it didn't. Uh, we still have cute browser in the wrong or something is messed up here. Or it is actually because we not, didn't restart now, because now we have the old marks and stuff like that. Um, so let's do that. i3 king, whatever, verbose. There, and then we do i3 message restart. Now, yeah, now it worked uh, because now it focused each window before it uh, executed i3 feed up. Uh, but this is not bulletproof at all, uh, because sometimes now, uh, and it is not, um, now when we already have all the windows in place here, it is probably safe to use this, to use focus before we execute. But when you start an application, for example, say Sublime, uh, Sublime starts, it triggers the rule here, putting Sublime in this container. Uh, and it focuses Sublime first. But what can sometimes happen is that some applications, when you start them, they they create like three different windows uh, immediately. And one window triggers the rule and some other window that the application created. Uh, maybe a better example is, I, I don't know, Audacity, for example. It brings up this stupid hello, welcome to Audacity uh, window. Or Calibre have this splash screen. It's often these splash screen uh, windows that, that uh, messes this up. So then that window has focus uh, when i 3 fida starts to uh, execute its stuff and then it tries to place the wrong window in the wrong container. The, it, it's a quite rare, uh, um, uh, it's a rare um, issue but it happens sometimes and that is something I have lived with forever because there is no workaround for it really. It would be a workaround if we somehow could tell i3 Fira to operate on a specific window uh, that we not use the focus window instead use this specific window. The best way to say this specific window in uh, i3 i3 uh, language is to use the container ID, ID. If I run i3 get here without any uh, arguments, I will get the container ID of this active window here. And this is a unique identifier in i3 for this window. You don't need class, you know, don't need instance, even if you have hundreds of windows with the same instance, a class name, whatever, they will each have a unique container ID. Um, and if it was, were some way to pass that container ID to i3 Fira, uh, when I want to move uh, a window, for example, that would make everything a lot more secure and, and streamlined in a way. And it was, it was super easy to add that here to, to i3 King. Now that I am in control, oh, I just had to add this line here. And now uh, I can pass, I can use a magic variable in i3 King to use that container ID or the window ID if I wanted to use that. So now when the rules are triggered, I just, I also added this uh, command to i3 Fira because I didn't have, ha have it. I thought I had something like this, but I didn't. So, so the command line option con ID and then the magic variable con ID. Um, 
And as you can see, I can use the magic variables inside the set variables here if I want to. So this is completely valid. Uh, and then it will uh, always pass the container ID of the triggered window and it will never uh, try to move the wrong window or anything. And the nice thing is that we also don't need to use uh, focus now because focus, it is a bit annoying actually when it focuses windows, sometimes that is not what you want. Especially not here when you restart uh, because um, then it doesn't have to shift the focus around and stuff like that because that can cause some flickering if you especially if you have a lot of windows in a tab or, or something like that and this is actually this is such a i was so happy when i realized this and it was so easy to to add it to both i3 feeda and this and it's it's kind of coming together now my my tools here are working together uh, uh it feels great and i was also, the, the last refactor of, uh, for example, i3-get, it was so easy to add that extra option there. So you now can get the window type, which which was needed to, to get a here. It feels great. <laughs> it feels so good. So this update doesn't, it, it just comes with some extra features, like the con ID option for i3-theta, the magic variables here in i3-king. It automatically restarts itself even if uh, i3 crashes now apparently that yeah that will be in the next update here what i just did here um, but now with that con id variable we have that here now uh, it does the same thing but now we don't have to refocus with i3 feeder will never uh, use the wrong window place it in, in the wrong place uh, that, I'm close now. I'm close to getting a, like a stable <laughs> desktop environment experience here with my stuff. Uh, the, I, I am actually glad now that i3 broke the four window rules. So it, it, it forced me to, to uh, look at this myself. And this turned out so, so nice. I, I hadn't really uh, expected this to, to be such a, such a, such an improvement to, to the overall experience and it has so many so many advantages here that i can now see the rules here also which rule was triggered uh, when what window triggered what rule and stuff you can quite easily uh, determine that with the output of, of i3 king which have also been really helpful for me to see some some rules that have always been broken it was broken for me in i3 but i never really realized uh, what was going on but now i could easily identify what was going on it's it's so so nice so yeah thank you i3 for messing up your uh, the window manager so i have to fix it myself uh, because it always gets better maybe i should write my own window manager but i think i think if i did it would be too powerful and uh, you know creating a, a black hole or something like that <laughs> no uh, but this video I'm recording now, my intention here was actually to talk about this, how I create these monitor tabs here, but I think we, we, we have to take that in a separate video because now we're up to 53 minutes again. Uh, but you got some live coding, live crashing, red box of death with no fear. Hmm? Yeah, that's what you get on Bud Labs, you know. I actually, I, I embrace the red box of death. I even have it as my banner for, for my <laughs> channel, if you haven't seen that. Uh, yeah, let's just open video here. Shut up, Budridge. Go to the Bud Labs channel. This is my banner. <laughs> the Red Box of Death. I embrace it. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of you, Red Box. Just come here. Come here, Red Box. I will... Mm. I would just restart and apply all the rules again. No problem. No problem. Thank you for watching, everybody. Uh, I will now just uh, make an update here uh, yet again. So uh, that that means it's uh, four updates in three days. It's it's a new record uh, at Bud Labs. Um, yes, i three s i three s is just getting better. Also make sure if you want to, or if you're interested here, check out the wiki about i3king. If you want to see how it works, it's very easy to use it. Um, 
it's a huge improvement over four window rules. Um, you will get a cleaner i3 config and you will get a more manageable rule uh, file external. I thought this would be kind of annoying to have them separated, but, but it isn't. They, it, it is better. Everything feels better. I am relieved. I have defeated the box we I see you in the next video. Bye.